Hey yo, everyone. Well, emulators have finally come to iPhone, and if you're anything like me, you're ready to dive headfirst into the world of mobile emulation. Today, I want to talk about 10 of the best games you can play right now on the Delta emulator for iOS. I'm mostly looking at single player games here because I want to talk about games that you can just enjoy while sitting on the bus or chilling on the couch during commercials or playing for a bit in bed before you go to sleep. You know, games that just make sense for your phone. Before we begin, this list is composed of games that I have and haven't played yet. If they're on here, it's because I'm planning on playing them for the first time or have already played them and want to experience it again on my iPhone. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Alright, let's get it. At number 10, let's start out with a classic, Tetris. The NES version, or really any version of Tetris, is basically perfect. Yeah, I guess you can download Tetris from the App Store, but have you actually tried it? I have, and it is god-awful. I love playing Tetris. The simple puzzle game just itches something in my messed up brain that nothing else really can. It's the perfect game to play when you want to keep yourself occupied for a few minutes at a time. It's like a fidget spinner, but digital. Anyway, the App Store version is f***ing terrible. Do not play it. The game itself is of course fine, the Tetris mechanics are a well-oiled machine at this point, but the app is just chocked full of ads and microtransactions that it becomes almost unbearable to play. On top of that, you always need to be connected to the internet for some reason. There is an offline mode, but it won't save any of your high scores if you play it. Like for real, they designed this game to be played online and tempt you with as many microtransactions as possible. So out of self-respect, do yourself a favor and play Tetris through the Delta emulator. You can go back to a time where games were just games and not some interactive advertisement for you to spend more money on extra lives or whatever bullshit is going on. Sure, the game isn't optimized for touch controls exactly, but you can at least play the game without having to close out of a dozen ads after every run. To me, Tetris on Delta is a perfect example of how we can preserve a game's legacy without having to deal with modern day gimmicks. Moving on down to number 9, let's talk about Paper Mario. The first Paper Mario game came out on the Nintendo 64, and since the remake of the Thousand Year Door is just a few months out, why not give the first Paper Mario a go on Delta while you wait? I actually haven't played the first one, but I have played some of the other entries, and I gotta tell you guys, I love them. The stories are fun, the characters are charming, and the gameplay is unique yet manageable. Did you know that the first Paper Mario game was originally supposed to be a sequel to Super Mario RPG? I definitely didn't, and since I just beat the Super Mario RPG remake a few months ago, I'm curious to see what similarities the two games will have. Like most games in the series, Mario sets out on an adventure in a paperfied version of the Mushroom Kingdom to rescue Princess Peach. The RPG elements have you growing an ever-expanding party of characters that each have their own personalities with unique abilities and gameplay mechanics. The turn-based combat is a bit different than the usual action that Mario games have, but I think it works out great for the genre. If you want to see where all of the Paper Mario hype began, why not give the original one a try? At number 8, I got Kirby and the Crystal Shark. Back when I was a kid, this was one of the first games that I ever played. I have fond memories of this gem back on our old beat up Nintendo 64, but I haven't revisited it in years. So while I was making this list, I figured I'd give this old girl some love. Kirby and the Crystal Shard is so fun. It's a blend of a 2D and 3D platformer, but mostly a 2D platformer. The visuals are in 3D, but the gameplay is basically the same as a classic 2D platformer. If you've never played a Kirby game or just want to try one to get your feet wet in the series, then play Kirby and the Forgotten Land. That one is probably the best in the series, truthfully. But if you're looking for one to just emulate on your phone, then give Kirby and the Crystal Shard a shot. The gameplay is simple, but it is a decent challenge. Like Paper Mario, you're emulating the Nintendo 64 for this one, but I haven't ran into any troubles while I've been playing besides a couple of visual hiccups. And to be honest, that could honestly be just from the game itself, not the emulator, but I digress. This is one of my favorite entries in the Kirby series, from the boss battles to the music. I think you'll have a great time with this one. At number 7, I got Chrono Trigger. This legendary JRPG is a game that I have not played yet, but now that emulators are on iPhones, I can't ignore it any longer. Chrono Trigger originally released back in 1995 and to this day is still considered one of the greatest video games of all time. And if you take a peek behind the curtain, it totally makes sense. 
Square, the publisher behind the game, named the development team the Dream Team for a reason. Listen to this squad. I'm sorry if I butchered these names, by the way. Final Fantasy creator Hironobu Sakaguchi, Dragon Quest creator Yuji Hori, and Dragon Ball manga author Akira Toriyami all led the development of this game. No wonder it's one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time. The story follows a group of characters who travel throughout different points in time in order to stop the end of the world. Despite the fact that the game is almost 30 years old now, you can still see its influence in modern games. Multiple endings, plot related side quests, deep character development, an engaging battle system, and of course, one of the greatest soundtracks ever released. I don't have much else to say because like I said, I haven't played this yet, but if all of this doesn't convince you to give Chrono Trigger a shot, I don't know what will. Moving on down to number 6, let's talk about Mother 3. This is another game that I haven't played yet, but come on, can you blame me? For whatever reason, Nintendo refuses to make an English version of the game. People have been begging for well over a decade for this classic to get an English port, so much so that even celebrities like Terry Crews are asking for it. Thankfully, fans smarter than me have been able to create their own English dub of the game and have released the ROM online for everyone to enjoy. If you haven't played Earthbound or Mother 2, don't worry about it. From what I found online, you can just hop into Mother 3 and enjoy this classic by itself. The role-playing gameplay this time around may not be as captivating as Chrono Trigger, but Mother 3 more than makes up for that with incredible character development, beautiful pixel graphics, and one of the all-time great narratives in video games. The game follows a party of characters as they try to stop some mysterious army from invading Earth or something. I don't know, I'm just reading the Wikipedia page here. The game is known for its incredible storytelling, particularly how it handles the themes of grief and tyranny. Like, I, I, I wish I had more to say, but like I said, I haven't played this yet and I'm just going off of what I've heard from other people. Mother 3 has a massive cult following, which is even more incredible when you remember the game never even got an English dub in America. Anyway, Terry Crews endorses it, so I gotta at least give it a shot, right? At number 5, Animal Crossing Wild World. Animal Crossing is a perfect series to emulate on your iPhone. The task-based gameplay is the ideal fit for someone who just wants to hop into the game for a few minutes throughout their day while they're sitting on the couch or bored at work. This game may not have the same depth as New Horizons, but it was meant to be played handheld as Wild World was originally released for the Nintendo DS. I don't really have much else to say, I mean, it's Animal Crossing. It's a feel-good management game whose music is the backbone of this YouTube channel. If you want to get into Animal Crossing and don't have a Switch, give Wild World a chance. You might just end up loving it. Speaking of a perfect series to emulate on your iPhone, at number 4, I got WarioWare Touched. The WarioWare franchise is honestly the series that would best translate to mobile gaming. Basically, you're given dozens and dozens of fast-paced minigames where you have to react quickly or think outside of the box in order to complete them. The minigames are always throwing new mechanics and ideas at you to keep you on your toes. It can be ridiculously stupid at times, but I think that's part of its charm. Seriously though, the amount of range that these different minigames cover is incredible. And it's quick gameplay that doesn't require a lot of time investment, so if you want to get a taste of what emulation can be like on your phone, then I think WarioWare Touch is a good jumping off point. Moving on down to number 3, I got Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. I haven't played this game yet, but I've seen a bunch of people talk about it over the years and figured, sure, why not? If you're familiar with the Ace Attorney games, Ghost Trick is a game cut from the same cloth since they both share the same director, Shu Takumi. In Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, you play as a ghost who has lost his memory, and your goal is to discover who you are and how you died. This puzzle game throws a lot at you from the get-go. From solving puzzles to talking to larger-than-life characters, Ghost Trick is an experience that I am dying to get into. No pun intended. The game unfortunately bombed when it originally came out for whatever reason, but like Mother 3, it's developed a cult following. I love the Ace Attorney trilogy, so I'm pretty open to try anything that Takumi puts out. One thing to note about this game though, it's actually available in the App Store, but the reviews are pretty mixed, with people saying that it's buggy and isn't very well optimized. So if Capcom isn't going to show this game the love it deserves, then I'm sure it's all happy that emulators are. Alrighty, down to number 2, Link's Awakening. I was torn between this one and A Link to the Past, but ultimately, I went with Link's Awakening. If you haven't played it yet, Link's Awakening is one of the best Zelda games out there. 
I will admit I'm a bit biased because I think it's my favorite one, but I honestly think that if you've never played a Zelda game, this is a great entry point, especially on mobile. Yes, there is the remake on Switch, but the original one still holds up really well. The game is incredible. It's a self-contained story of adventure, ethics, and damn, existentialism. Link's Awakening isn't terribly long either, but the story and exploration makes it feel like such a complete package. Admittedly, I had to use a guide at certain points throughout the game, so don't feel bad about having to look stuff up at times. I hope that doesn't deter you from giving this game a chance though. Link's Awakening is one of my favorite games of all time, and if you play through it, I think it will land a spot on your all-time list as well. And last but not least, at number one, let's talk about Pokemon. Any and every Pokemon game is perfect for handheld emulation. The turn-based action translates so well to touch controls, and the games were originally built for handhelds anyway, so it doesn't feel like you're compromising anything when playing on your phone. The Pokemon franchise in recent years has dipped in quality, to say the least, but I'm happy to say that the older games still hold up incredibly well. The stories are charming, the Pokemon variety is top notch, and the pixel graphics are some of the best in the business, and they're just fucking great games, man. Not only can you play through these classic gems in all of their original glory, but Delta also allows you the quality of life feature to fast forward the gameplay so you can fly through certain encounters or dialogue breaks. These games feel like they were built to be emulated, and there actually are ROMs that were built specifically to be emulated. I haven't played it yet, but Pokemon Unbound is a fan-made game that apparently rivals even the best Pokemon entries in the franchise. If you want to get the most out of your Delta experience, then you gotta get the Pokemon ROMs ASAP. You will not regret it. That's a Party Panda 17 guarantee. Alright, quickly, an honorable mention, Super Mario World. This is a classic that everyone should try to play at least once. I've played through this one before, and it was one of the first games I wanted to test out on my iPhone when Delta was released. I am pleased to say that it runs basically perfectly on the emulator. I was a little bit nervous because for games like this where you kinda need quick reactions, touch controls aren't really the best, but from what little I've played so far, I think the controls work out surprisingly well, especially if you flip your phone on its side. I still think you'll have a better time with physical buttons, but if you just want to give this classic a go, then I think touch controls will suffice. But that's my list. What do you guys think? What games did I forget to mention? What are you playing first on Delta? I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot. I appreciate you guys as always, and I'll catch you in the next one.